Hey everybody, I'm Emma Farzan, and welcome back to this video series on how to make a 2D multiplayer card game using Unity and Mirror. In this episode, we're going to start building the architecture for our card game. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity Hub, and I'm going to presume that you've already installed Unity Hub and a stable version of Unity. I'm going to be using 2020.2.6f1, as I mentioned in the previous video. If you're using uh, another version of Unity, it probably would be a, a good idea to use one that is after this version, um, as uh, some things uh, prior to it obviously have been deprecated. That's just how they do things. If you can use this exact version, I think you'll be a lot happier with the results, uh, at least in the learning process. You can use whatever you want for your live build or your, your release build. Um, but um, if you do run into any problems, please do try to, to um, revert back to this Unity version that says that may solve things for you. Same when we get to installing Mirror. So I'm going to hit New, and I'm going to create a new project based on a 2D template. We can call it whatever we want. Let's just call it um, 2D Multiplayer Card Game. And we'll say Create. And Unity should spin up that template for us. And in this episode particularly, I want to point out a few things about the Unity Editor, not from a very basic level, as I have other videos that will cover that, but specific to our needs uh, for this particular card game and card game tutorial. For example, with this card game tutorial, we won't really be dealing with 2D physics at all, which is what you'd use for a, um, a platformer. We will have a little bit of usage of, for example, um, uh, colliders when we drag and drop our cards. We want them to detect drop zones and that sort of thing. But we certainly uh, won't be needing like um, the types of key inputs that you would need to control your, um, your little character in a platformer or something like that. Uh, and we'll mostly be dealing with the canvas layer rather than other uh, uh, types of things that you would use when manipulating game, job, game objects in in other types of games like a top-down 2D game or like I said a platformer. So there's something specific to making a uh, tabletop card game um, that are very very um, uh, niche based and will leverage a lot of the canvas um, tools that we have in Unity. So I'm looking at this sample scene that it's created for me. There's really not much going on here. Um, and if you're not familiar with Unity at all, like I said, it might be good to watch one of my um, uh, other videos that provide a more introductory um, uh, approach to understanding Unity and C Sharp programming. But in any case, um, most of my work is going to be done in this scene or in my uh, code editor. And uh, right now, I don't have anything in this um, in this uh, scene except for a main camera. But even even so, it may be useful for us to, um, uh, to understand that when we have this main camera, um, there are uh, a, a lot of different things that you would manage if you were handling this in a uh, different scenario. Like if you were doing a 3D uh, game, for example, you might um, make sure that the camera is placed in a certain way or uh, just handle it differently. If you were... Um, uh, wanting to zoom in on different parts of the screen, you might add a different type of camera. We're not going to be handling any of that in this game. What we will be doing is making certain uh, that our canvas and our game scene are set up. So when I look at this uh, game scene, first of all, there's um, uh, right at the top, it shows where it's going to display the game and also uh, what is the aspect ratio for the game. I'm going to be working on 1920 by 1080. If you don't have this already in your dropdown, then you'll just need to add it using this plus sign. And that'll help make sure that everything that I do will look very similar on, the, um, on your screen. Secondarily, if I, let's say, um, I add a game object to, the, to, this, uh, to my scene, let's say that I, um, uh, for, uh, to make things easy, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to um, uh, game object and I'm going to go to uh, UI and then I'm going to go down to button. Let's say we're going to create a button for our game. That's going to immediately populate a canvas object um, here and uh, some other things so it will create a button for me as well as the canvas and an event system. We're going to benefit from all of these different things in our tutorial. 
Uh, but what I want to look at first is just having this canvas here. When I click on it, there's a few different uh, um, options here that we can change, which will help make sure that your game runs very similarly to my game. For example, when I have this on um, my render mode, there are a few different ways to render our game. We're going to be using screen space dash overlay. That just means that the uh, user interface is going to, or the canvas, is going to operate as an overlay over everything else in our screen. We don't want it to, um, like, uh, it would be similar like if you had a heads up display on a platformer. We want it to just like stay right there and have no, nobody or nothing mess with it. Um, also, in, under the UI scale mode, right now we have it set to constant pixel size. We want to change it to scale with screen size. That will make it easier so that if the, um, if the, the um, screen size changes, we, just want it, we want the game to scale with it. And we'll say that the reference resolution here is 1920 by 1080. That's going to help us um, make sure that, uh, that everything matches up correctly in our scene in our game, um, which again we're going to be um, working at 1920 by 10 by 1080. So when I look at my scene, I can zoom out to see what's happening here. And so, like, you might say, like, okay, well, I see this. Um, camera thing here and then there's this big thing like what's happening just zoom out and you'll see that what's happened here is the game has created a canvas for us which is this 19 nice 1920 by uh, 1080 resolution um, uh, canvas if I hit play I'll see the button all the way down here I can move the button wherever I want I'm gonna move the button right now in uh, in my scene tab I'm gonna move it over to uh, over here just like you know right in the middle of the screen here and maybe to the right and uh, all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the canvas name just by clicking on it and um, you know you can click on it once and then you can click on it again like you would do to rename anything on a desktop or you could just right click and click rename I'm gonna call it main canvas um, paying attention to the capitalization as well as the spacing as one should do in any uh, um, programming scenario so it might be good to be comfortable with that and I can leave the button named button um, and when I uh, something that I want you to notice is that as I click on these different uh, objects here in the hierarchy I um, the button is nested under the main canvas. That's very important. It means that the button is a child of the main canvas or the main canvas is a parent of the button. Um, and that's going to factor in quite a bit when we talk about how to render one card over another or make sure that things are childs of uh, children of uh, other things. So let's right off the bat just see that the button is nested under the main canvas, meaning that is a, it is a, a child of the main canvas or the main canvas is a uh, parent of the button. When I uh, move, when I click on any of these things, then I can see more information about them in the inspector on the right hand side. We'll see uh, with the button, for example, there is a, a transform which governs um, the size and the position and all of these things of the, um, of the button. There's a canvas renderer. There's an image, and if we had a sprite uh, or, you know, like a, um, uh, some sort of image that we had already created rather than just this white button, we could use that here. Um, there's the button itself, which is a, um, a user interface uh, object or uh, component attached to this. And then there's a little place that says on click, which is uh, what we'll use to determine what happens when someone clicks the button. Nothing too exciting, but we will notice that the button, if we zoom in, it just says button. How do we change that? Well, if we click on this little arrow next to the button, we'll see a text object, which is a child of the button. And if I click on that text, I see some of the uh, some similar uh, things in the inspector components. Um, but right now I see the text component just says button. We're going to change that to say draw cards. And you could change the font, the font size, whatever you like here. That's all good. Now going back to the um, and I can click, I can go up here and um, go file save or just click Control S. Um, 
to save my scene, you can pretty much just presume I'm saving early and saving often. So go ahead and just save whenever you do uh, pretty much anything. I'm not going to uh, let you know when you should be saving. Just assume that you should save. Um, and then let's say I want to change the color of the background of this uh, button. I'm going to click on it and uh, my games are all pretty much cyberpunk, uh, cyberpunk fantasy games. So I'm going to choose something on a, the color wheel here and uh, choose uh, like a cyberpunk blue cyan sort of thing. And if I knew the RGB code, I could just go ahead and enter that or the hex code. Um, and that's that. So I've created my draw cards button. Great. Okay. Well, I think that's um, going to do it for this uh, very simple introduction to the video series. We'll continue in the next uh, uh, in the next video, creating a background and some um, some player area and enemy area, and maybe even a drop zone for um, uh, the rest of our uh, user interface for the game. See you next time. Be sure to like and uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I'd love for you to check out my books and games. I'll put a link in the description for where you can find them. See you next time. Thank you.